sometimes the thought of painting can make us feel fearful and this video is all about controlling that fear as always i'm starting with a cup of coffee and this uh, coffee was kindly sponsored by a friend of mine hotness unleashed thank you very much for the coffee you click the link in the description and here we go the um the paper that i'm painting on today um, is called Moonstone by Canson. I'm going to be painting on the textured side, which, um, if you look at it closely, it looks a bit like very large orange peel. And uh, I like the textured side because it can give interesting effects for skin if you let it show through. Of course, the trouble is, is what tends to happen with pastel is you um, put down so many layers. That the the paper uh, doesn't show through but I'm sure as I, I get better at it um, I'll be less frightened to let the paper show through uh, Moonstone's an interesting paper it's got all sorts of little flecks in it and I thought it'd be great for painting my friend Robert about two hours into the painting I wasn't quite so sure uh, but we'll talk about that later you see the first thing that I'm cracking on with is um, the eyes. I'm not going to spend too long on this, I've sped it up quite a bit. Um, I'm just using pastel pencils to do the eyes. And um, I always start on the eyes for a couple of reasons. One's really practical. With nothing else done uh, on the surface, I can lean my hand on the paper and um, not get any pastel um, pigment on, on the side of my palm. So it just keeps the surface clean. So it's just a practical thing to start off doing the, the detail. You'll see I really lean into the, the painting, partly because I've got rubbish eyes. Um, and the other reason, I'm really trying to understand the colour of uh, Robert's eyes as well. I found that if I can get the eyes right, uh, then the rest of the painting's just going to emerge around those eyes, or <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself. And seeing as I'm in charge, I can believe myself as well. You know, eyes are incredible. In some cultures, it's considered rude to look into someone's eyes. Oh look, I'm onto the second coffee already. And uh, this one was sponsored by uh, Robert and his wife Andy delicious um, blend. It's a Vietnamese coffee. I've never had coffee from uh, Vietnam before and you can see it's kicking in and away I go. Uh, we're just using some yellows, oranges, reds of course, that's permanent red going in to start blocking it in. As I was saying, um, eyes are quite unusual. So uh, in Western cultures, we don't mind looking into someone's eyes. If you look in someone's eyes too long, they can view it as um, aggressive. Some countries, it's really considered rude to uh, look into someone's eyes, and I've got no idea uh, how the artists paint eyes then in those cultures. And when I looked at Robert's photo, it seemed to indicate that he had hazel eyes. And uh, to get that look, it took me over an hour. I used a huge range of colours. I just grab any pastel pencil I think is going to add to the value. They look a bit green to begin with. Um, but as the painting gets filled up, uh, they seem to change according to uh, the colours around them. You may wonder why I haven't uh, displayed Robert's reference photo. And instead I've got his finished portrait on the uh, left hand side. Well here's the thing. Painting is a process where we just start from nothing. And for the vast majority of the painting it just looks terrible. One YouTube artist I follow analysed the drop off point. Um, the stats on YouTube. When, when do most people drop out of a a video and uh, I was about halfway through when the painting looks the absolute worst 
And uh, she surmised that most people can't connect the chaos they see on the canvas or the paper to the finished product. And so they give up. And when the painting or drawing doesn't appear exactly as the photo, some also give up because um, some just imagine painting to be a duplication, a replication of the uh, reference photo. You know, if realism is the criteria for art, then Picasso, Monet and Van Gogh really didn't get the memo. And uh, that really leads into the topic of this video, being afraid of painting being afraid it won't look real enough. And I've said it before, there's many super talented, hyper-realistic artists today. Um, they just do fantastic work. Their paintings look better than um, the reference photo. And many of them have really excellent Patreon accounts where um, people can learn to replicate a photo. And if you're into painting fur, well, that's really exciting as well. It's certainly a market for uh, pet commissions. I'm not here to tell you what you should paint. I'm just here to share some life experience on overcoming fear. I've had uh, quite a few fears I've had to overcome in my life. Just as I'm, I'll just take a break from waffling on and just mention, I don't know if you notice, but as I'm, I'm laying on those pan pastels, I'm just trying to find the contours of uh, Robert's face. So I'm just pulling the, um, the little sponge palette knives in the direction of um, where the skin goes. Um, we're just, we're not colouring in, we're, we're trying to paint. It's all about getting the shapes in the right, uh, right spot. And wow, you can see I needed a lot of coffee on this um, particular picture. It took uh, longer than what I expected and when I got to this stage, so every time I do that plunger about an hour has gone by. I'm just holding up the pan pastels just trying to gauge um, what might be the right colours uh, to change because poor Robert was starting to look a bit clownish here. Just so much yellow and red and I was like what am I doing? Anyway, a lot of people say when it comes to painting that they can't paint. Have you ever said that? I've got no talent. I can't draw. I can't paint. Well, I'm a dad. And when I married my wife, she came with uh, two lovely girls. And later on, we had two boys of our own. And I could have said to myself, I can't be a dad because I've got no talent for that. In which case I would have never married my wife, never had kids at all, because I was afraid of doing something that required a daily effort for which I had no talent for. In my professional career I became a business transformation manager and uh, I would go in and fix up large operations that were struggling and turn them around into very high performance organisations. And um, I never felt that I had any talent for that. It was just a case of getting on and doing it. And if I had waited for talent to arrive, I would have missed out on some of the most exciting and productive years of my life. The thing with fear is it acts as a restraint for us. Um, we need fear. It's very important to have it to protect us from danger. We should fear putting our hands into a fire. And yet aren't we grateful for firemen and women who charge into buildings that are on fire and save lives? Do they do that because they're talented? Or are they able to do that because they know how to control their fear? There's a lot of things we do in life that we just don't need talent for. Although I probably could have used a bit of talent when I was uh, doing these teeth. You're going to see as, as I do them, I'm just using um, sort of like an ultramarine to uh, to block them in. I was thinking, you know what, I'm, i just got to put some teeth in here. I'm tired of this empty space. And um, we're going to see, I just didn't quite get it to begin with. And um, 
we'll do some dental work on Robert as we, we go through this. So uh, when it comes to painting, I've got no talent whatsoever. It's probably quite evident what I'm doing here. This is uh, my 53rd painting. And every time I start a painting, I am afraid. I'm afraid that I'm a fraud, that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm afraid that I just can't complete the painting. And I'm also afraid that the person I'm painting, if I'm doing a portrait, just won't like it. And I know I'm not alone. A lot of artists are afraid of similar things. And uh, how we control our fear is we just get started. The fear is always going to be with us. But it's a bit like um, we've got a, a stereo in our head. And we can either amplify the fear by uh, listening to it loud, or uh, we can turn the volume down on it. And uh, it'll still be there, but just a whisper in the background. Uh, that's another reason why I display the finished painting on my videos to the side. Uh, it shows that even though at times while I'm, I'm painting, I'm looking at it going, what the heck am I doing? In the end, it seems to turn out okay. And uh, that just gives me the courage to get on to the next painting, and the next after that, until eventually I will have figured out what I'm doing. Uh, if you see those teeth there, particularly on the right hand side, um, they were just uh, not right, but they will get fixed as I go through it. If you check the, um, the finished portrait, you'll see that um, much more straightened out. So at my current level of skill, I'm confining myself to using um, Pam Pastels and Pastel Pencils in this particular type of paper, Canson uh, Metantes. Uh, with Pastel Pencils alone, it's quite possible to create hyper-realistic works. I've, I've done some lovely stuff myself, if I dare to say that. Uh, not on this type of paper, um, but on Pastel Mat. Uh, you can use pastel pencils um, and do beautiful work on Canson paper. Um, I don't know why it gets so much hate. It's it's actually, you know, such great value for money and uh, where I am in my artistic journey, um, it's just perfect. And Pam Pastels love this type of paper. Um, it's cotton rich and the, uh, the Pam Pastels flow on. And because the um, Pam Pastel pigment is about uh, 10 times finer than pastel sticks, it can sit uh, transparently on top of another colour. That's very different from how um, pastels normally work as an opaque medium. Uh, in order to overcome um, my fear of painting in a way that doesn't look real enough, uh, I choose to paint with colours that don't look real at all. After all, I'm not trying to be a colour copier. I'm not wanting to just replicate the photo of Robert. He's already got a fine photo, a nice selfie he did of himself. What I want to capture is the sizzle under his skin. And by sizzle, I mean the energy that he has, a sense of his life, the essence of who he is. If you're going to catch a capture someone's sizzle, you've really got to shut down the fear which will try to make you paint in a way that your brain thinks will appease an audience. You've got to stop trying to paint for others and um, just relax and learn to read the reference photo. Do you remember learning to read? I can actually remember the first year of school I went to and learning to read um, little books. I think they were called Dick and Jane because I googled books of um, sort of the era I, I went to school in and saw these little books. And I thought, yeah, yeah, it was a little boy, a little girl and off they were doing stuff and introducing verbs and nouns to me. And it took me, um, you know, the first year and then I learned to read and I fell in love with it. Um, but not everyone can read fluently. And some people are terrified of reading out loud to others because they're frightened of what others might think. Oh, look, there's, there's the next coffee. 
I just got to load up on coffee as I'm doing these paintings. It, um, it's my creative juice. Um, yeah, so, so people are frightened of what others uh, are thinking about their abilities. Well, here's the thing. If you live your life based on what you imagine will please others, or live a life so that you won't be judged by others, you're not really living your life at all. You're just living, existing for the sake of others. A life lived in fear is no fun. And uh, this is the fear we have to confront when it comes to art. Whatever you paint or create is going to be judged by others. Unless, you know, you just throw it in a box afterwards and never show it to anyone. And some are going to say they don't like it. Oh, it's okay. Occasionally my wife and I are given a box of chocolates. I always eat the coffee flavoured ones and she always has the mint ones. I just don't like mint. And she doesn't like coffee. And we both spit out the Turkish Delight ones. So sorry to those who love Turkish Delight. It just isn't our vibe. Well, if someone doesn't like our art, they may like other art. It's like the chocolates, you know, just because they don't like one doesn't mean they hate chocolates per se. And um, just some art just isn't going to appeal. And it could be ours that, um, that they don't like. But that's okay, because really the person you're uh, painting for and doing the art for is yourself. You're just learning to grow. I mean, look at me. Here I am putting thalo green all around Robert in his hair, in his beard, just everywhere. I was like, you know what, I feel like putting some green down. It just felt right. And uh, so for me, you know, you go, I'm not scared to do that. I'm, I'm painting for me, I'm trying to understand um, how to read his uh, photo. What are the contours of his face? Where are the, the, not just the light and the shade, but where is the person hiding um, beneath the photo? I'm trying to get a, a sense of him. And that's why I start throwing in the, the greens and the blues. And I've got to say, um, his reference photo was a bit of a trap for me. Uh, he had taken a selfie and... Um, it had a flash on it and it really washed out quite a chunk of his uh, skin tone and um, while I thought you know, the, the composition would be easy to do you can see I'm fiddling around here trying to work out um, where to take him and my brain was was saying no, no, he's got brown skin or pink skin and um, what are you doing with all this yellow and red and now you've gone and thrown green on, what are you doing? And honestly this is the sort of self-talk that happens when you're, you're painting and um, it's like, it's okay, you, you need to listen to it a, a little bit, I was just dropping on some greys there to... Um, uh, just uh, didn't have enough grey and at this stage I was thinking you know what I've got the wrong paper and um, you had a point sometimes in a painting where you know this is 60 70 percent done and I, I'm now going but it's a mess how look at this big mark it's like he's been hit with an axe in the middle of the head what am I doing and um, you just carry on you go you know what I'm just going to carry on and uh, see what happens. Now with these um, palette knives, um, or sponges, I'm not sure what, what the correct expression is for them, um, I often will load on the edge of the, um, I'm going to call it a knife, I load it on the, the pan pastel on the edge and give it a flick and uh, that that's quite an interesting, you get interesting marks from that. And um, 
Just watching myself doing it now as it, it comes around. You can start getting more uh, blue around the eyes for those uh, those shadows. And uh, you'll see me get out my little electric um, eraser to, to clean up the, the paper. The teeth were now starting to, to come together. Um, it was like, you know what, it's time to just get that here and shirt done. And, uh, and then suddenly he starts popping, you know, so just a moment ago, I'm, I'm in real terror going, I don't even know if I can finish this. And uh, But if you keep going, um, it'll start to emerge. And some artists I've heard on, on YouTube say this about amateur art, is that uh, they stop too soon and just need to keep going. Well, there is a problem with Pam Pastel that... Um, it will go muddy if, if you start getting too much on there. Um, but at, at, at the other end of the spectrum, it does work like paint. So um, if you've got a light touch and just start flicking it on, um, you just adjust the camera so you can see the shirt going in. I just want a, an idea of the shirt. Uh, we'll work on the collar, but the rest is just, just to give an impression, you know, he's got something on. Um, so the, the paints really, st well the, the pen pastel does behave like a paint and, and just sticks beautifully to the um, the paper. You won't see me use any fixative whatsoever on this. Don't need to. Um, and there's no, no dust flying around. It's very clean. Um, it's just a lovely medium to, to work with. And so we're starting to get his eyebrows in and... I was starting to go, you know what, I'm, I'm, st <laughs> I was starting to feel good. I was looking at his lip and thinking, yeah, that worked out all right. It's, you know, we're just trying to, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You, you're just trying to feel your way through, read the, read the photo, go, oh, yep, that's, that looks real enough to me. And then it was just a case of, how do I, tone back some of um, what I've done, I've fixed that forehead a bit. Um, but the the photo reference, the lighting had been um, so strong, that's why it was casting strong shadows uh, on his forehead. And I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep those because he's a strong person. Um, my very first message to him, I met um, Robert and July and um, July 22 on a social Saturday and uh, he had been sent to LinkedIn jail for over connecting with too many people so my first message to him was hey Robert hope LinkedIn let you out of jail soon I can't break you out here's another connection request just to infuriate the algorithm and he never responded but we chatted frequently in the comments and posts and I really liked how each weekend uh, he had posted a photo of him and his wife uh, out enjoying the outdoors. And they were so comfortable in each other's company, um, I began to see him not as just a CEO of a successful company who happened to make interesting content, but as someone I could relate to. So the next month I sent him another message and it went, Hey Robert, do you recognise this couple? They were painted with sponges, so you might not. I'd done a portrait of him and his wife using Pam Pastels. It was like my third portrait, so it wasn't that great. Anyway, he said, Wow, David, that is awesome. I'm speechless here. That is the first couple's portrait anyone has ever painted of us. We really like it. Can you imagine how that comment just... It just destroyed all the fears I had. And uh, just melted them away. And uh, Robert and I continued to have quite a few laughs together on LinkedIn together. And uh, as I paint him now, I see him with those, those golds and, and reds. You know, they're just shining out. And he's someone who wants others to shine as well. And even though I knock back the, the colour a bit, I'm pretty happy with how he's portrayed now. We're just coming to the end here. And what I'd done was I'd asked my wife... Um, to cast two excellent eyes over it to see if I missed anything. And she said, oh, you just got to fix the shadow 
um, on his right eye. So here I am. You start looking at your own work for hours, you um, begin to forgive your own errors instead of um, actually correcting them. So I hope um, as we've gone through this video you've got some value about uh, the fear of painting. You'll never get rid of it. We're, we're all afraid. Um, all we can do is uh, turn down the, the voice in our head a little bit and go, you know what? I'm just going to have a go. I'm just going to crack on and do this anyway. You don't need talent. Uh, you just need to get started. Like I said, this is only my 53rd. Um, wait until I've got to my 153rd and uh, I'll be so grateful that I overcame my fear and, and got started. And so, uh, yep, you can see just how painfully slow I go. Apparently with a big wide open mouth. Who knew? The things we see uh, when we watch ourselves back. And so this is, um, I think this is the bit where I'm just going to say, well, you know, we'll call it a day. I want to thank you very, very much for watching the video and hope um, it inspires you to do some painting as well. Thank you.